Hi everyone, my name is Amaryllis and welcome to my channel. How's everybody doing? I hope everyone's doing well. I just want to say before I start, thank you for joining me on this video. This is a video I've been wanting to do for a little while, but I wasn't really sure how to frame it only because I'm, I still feel like I have a lot to do in regards to this subject and I feel like I'm not where I want to be, but I felt it was necessary to just share with you my journey with weight loss and just some tips and encouragement if you are also on a weight loss journey or if you are thinking about losing weight or if your story is anything like mine i just kind of want to share my heart and my thoughts and ideas and experiences with you so if that sounds like something you're interested in please stick around for the video and let's get started when it comes to weight loss for me, it's been pretty much a life, I want to say almost like a lifelong journey experience. <sighs> Let's see, I would say ever since I was in middle school, I struggled a little bit with my weight. I wasn't necessarily, I wasn't super skinny, I wasn't super overweight either, um, but I wasn't, I didn't look like everyone else and I knew that I was different as far as my weight was concerned. You know, I was a size 12 when I was in middle school going into high school. So, you know, your average kid, especially in my school, wasn't that size. And so I always was on the thicker side, if we can put it that way. So then we fast forward to like my later teens, early 20s when I was on my own and you know, I was working multiple jobs, just trying to make ends meet. And I lost a lot of weight at that time. Um, I would attribute it to a lot of activity and really walking everywhere because I didn't have the money to always buy a bus ticket. I didn't have a car. Like that's just a reality. I call it my struggle diet because I didn't have enough money to afford a lot of food. So I would only be able to buy small portions of food at a time. Um, like sometimes I will go to the Spanish restaurant by my house and I would just get, you know, like a $2 thing of white rice and maybe an empanada. And then like, that was it. Maybe embarrassing to say, but like maybe like a 25 cent, 50 cent honey bun. I don't know if you've ever seen those at the corner store, if y'all know what the corner store is, but that's kind of where I was at that point in my life, like late teens, really early 20s and I lost a lot of weight you know I was I was actually happy about it even though it was nothing that I was really doing intentionally it was just because of my life and the, you know kind of my struggle financially so then we can fast forward to a few years later I got married and I got comfortable you know my money was up you know kind of settling because I found the one we you know, we got our house, we move in together, and little by little, I start to pack on the pounds again. I also started on birth control, so that attributed to my hormones fluctuating, wanting to eat all the time, and I went from probably like a size eight, which I was fine with, to all the way up to an 18, which, um, yeah, it was really depressing for me because, you know, you gain the weight over time, but you don't really realize the impact that it's having on your mental health, um, the impact that it's having on your heart, not just your body, but your self image. At size 18, you know, my husband never ever made me feel like I was anything less than beautiful, never commented on, on my size or shape. He always loved me and I still does love me however I am, which I'm so grateful for. But I really had an unhealthy self image and I saw myself as just fat, unworthy, sloppy, not good enough. I had a really dark, sad perception of myself. I, I can't remember any time not really being disgusted with or really disliking the way I look. All of this is to say that I'm very familiar with the journey of trying to lose weight and failing many times. And you know, I've tried my share of diets and it wasn't until this year, 2020, the year of all years, <laughs> that I've actually 
been able to lose weight. All I know is that I turned 30 in at the end of 2019 and something clicked in my head like, girl, you're not getting any younger. You need to change this. Like you need to change these unhealthy habits and you need to change the way you see yourself. One thing I didn't do was jump to too much of an extreme because I had done that before with, you know, crazy diets, fat diets, and jumping to an extreme just really was not um, something that I could keep up with. And it didn't cause me to form good habits. It just made me try to stick to the rules of a diet, but not necessarily understand why I was doing it except to lose weight or how I could implement it into just daily life and a daily routine. What I did differently at the beginning of this year was really just starting slow because I really wanted it to stick. I wanted to build different habits. I had a tendency to overeat. I also had a tendency to eat emotionally or when I was bored to eat. I realized that through this whole journey that a lot of this stems from childhood. You know, being left alone because both parents work um, summertime I, when school was out, I didn't, we couldn't afford any real after school programs. And so I was home alone and dealing with that loneliness at a young age, I would just eat and eat and eat. And it was normal for me back then. And I realized now that even though it was normal for me to do that when I was alone, I would try to hide it. I wouldn't do that in front of anyone else. And I couldn't put language to it at that point, but now I know it was emotional eating. It was eating to fill a void because I felt lonely and nobody was there. And so filling that void with food was comforting. Food tastes good, it makes you feel good. So that's what I did to fill that void with a lot of things. Fast forward to January of this year. I implemented small changes you know, swapping out certain foods for healthier foods, incorporating more vegetables, lower carbs like rice and bread, etc. And right now it is September of 2020 and I've managed to lose 36 pounds, which for me is a big deal. I have a goal <laughs> that I want to reach and I want to reach at least 60 pounds down, but I am now at 36 pounds. Yay. And to tell you the truth, even now I'm not 100% satisfied with that, but I have learned to celebrate that because if I don't, I'm not going to have any longevity. So here I am. And along with changes in diet, small changes here and there, I've also drastically reduced my sugar intake and I have incorporated exercising into my weekly routine. I don't exercise every day because it's just not realistic for me, but I do make it a point to exercise a few times a week, two to three times a week. Not necessarily like I'm, I'm putting on my workout gear and you know, I'm, I'm doing a workout, but like, you know, being active, staying active, that's very important. <sighs> Even sitting here and saying this out loud is super nerve-wracking and but it's also freeing at the same time this is not something that i've been able to talk about i never really had anyone to really relate with or help me on this journey and that's probably mostly because i didn't really open up about it it was just something i beat myself up about secretly but i just want to share some things that i've learned with you to encourage you and to just give you you know that push that you might need to start or to keep going. Because those, for me, have been the two hardest things in this journey, is to start, and then the second hardest thing is to continue. So let's get into these tips. My first tip is don't beat yourself up. Maybe you've heard that before, but this is for real, for real, for real. Don't beat yourself up. There are so many people like you you are not alone. I'm telling you this, like I'm right here with you. <laughs> you are not alone in this journey. And just because you may not look or fit into a certain beauty standard or be a certain weight or have a certain body type or body shape or fit clothes a certain way, that doesn't mean that you are less than. It doesn't mean that you are not good enough. 
So I just want to encourage you not to beat yourself up if you aren't where you want to be right now. And this is coming from somebody who's like, this is coming from me. Like I've been there and I, I'm understanding and realizing now that it actually works to my detriment and it doesn't help at all. So that's why I'm telling you, like, just put the boxing gloves down, stop beating yourself up. It's easier said than done, but what I want you to do in a practical way is once a day, look in the mirror and point out something that you like about yourself. One thing, find one thing. I don't care if it's this one strand of hair right here and you say, I like this hair. I like this strand of hair in my head. Find one thing that you like about yourself and focus on that thing. Because it's easy for us to look in the mirror and have the laundry list of all the things that we dislike about ourselves. And then that becomes our dialogue. We repeat it over and over and over. Maybe not out loud, but in our minds. And then that becomes the thought and the perception that we have of ourselves. So just practically look in the mirror, even if you can't look in the mirror for long. You know what? I like this one thing about myself. That's what I'm gonna focus on. Number two, find what your triggers are. When I say find what your triggers are, I'm talking about what are the things that trigger you into unhealthy habits, whether that be eating something that's not healthy, for you or overeating or binging, whatever it is, try to find out what your triggers are. I know for me, overeating was usually triggered by stress, sadness, any kind of negative emotion triggered overeating because that's what I went to for comfort. Also, if I had nothing to fill my time, if I was bored, in the house, lonely, whatever, those would be the triggers for me. Or if something didn't go my way, let's say I was disappointed by the outcome of a certain situation, I would turn to food to make me feel good. Also, there are other triggers that may not seem as negative, but celebrating. Um, it's my birthday, I wanna go crazy, or oh, this great thing happened to me, let's order all this food. Like it's, it's Maybe it sounds silly, but it's a real thing. Just think about your day. A way that you can practically keep track of what might be triggering you is a journal or a notebook or anything that you can track what's going on in your mind. So let's say, okay, I did well for breakfast and lunch. I ate healthy, I stuck to my goals, but then when it came down to nighttime, I had this, you know, I had a piece of cake, but then I had three more pieces and then next thing you know, the cake is done. What happened between dinner and dessert that made you want to eat all the cake? Write it down. And then you can track it over the course of days and weeks and really find out what triggers you into unhealthy habits. Number three is take baby steps. It's important that when you're starting a weight loss journey, you set your expectation. And it's important that you know what you're trying to get out of this. Maybe you've heard the expression, find your why. That means find the reason why you are doing what you're doing. For me, my why is my family. Another why is my son being healthy enough to keep up with him and to play with him and um, to be around. And that brings me to number four, which is celebrate the small wins. I, I kind of touched on that with the baby steps, but in my journey, it was important for me to celebrate every single milestone, every single goal I achieved, and every few pounds that I lost, I celebrated it. If you went a whole week without eating a certain food or indulging or overindulging in your favorite snacks, if you went a whole week and you exercised for 10 minutes each day, like those are small wins. And celebrating those small wins really helps to boost your encouragement, your self-esteem, but most importantly, especially for me, it shows me that I can do what I set my mind to do. I've taken small steps, I've accomplished those small goals, and I celebrate them and I'm telling myself, wow, you did it. Wow, that means if you did this, you can keep going. 
you can really get to where you want to go because you did it. So let's celebrate those small wins. And my last tip, number five, is to seek help and accountability where you need it. One thing that has really helped me in this journey is sharing my goals and sharing my struggles with someone I love, someone I trust. So it, whether that be a friend or your spouse or whoever it is that you love and you trust, it's important to have someone to bounce your ideas off of, someone to share your goals with so that they can keep you accountable, like an accountability partner, and someone to share your struggles with so that they can encourage you to keep going. I really found it the most valuable to have people around me who not only encourage me in what I'm doing, but they don't judge me when I fall short or if I haven't gotten to where I wanna go in the time I set. That's really been a life changer for me. And it's also really outside my comfort zone. I don't really like to share the deeper, more intimate parts of myself with anyone, except for the Lord in prayer. Um, but I don't like to be super vulnerable because it's hard for me to trust people. And that's just the bottom line. But I've realized now that I've opened myself up to, it's really just one to two people. It's not a whole lot of people. Um, now that I've made myself vulnerable in that way and also try to make myself accountable to someone in this journey, it's almost like I have a firmer foundation under me because I know that if I fall, there's someone there to help me get back up. It's not just me trying to pull myself out the hole, <laughs> pull myself out the pit of despair and loneliness. There's someone else there and Though it is totally outside of my comfort zone and my character, it has really been defining in this journey and in what I've been wanting to do for so long, which is to get healthy, to lose weight, and to feel good. And there is nothing wrong with wanting that. It doesn't make you superficial. Those are the things that I wanted to share with you and encourage you about. If you are also on a weight loss journey or a health journey or a fitness journey, I really hope that these tips can help you and that they are practical for you. If you have any tips that you wanna share about your journey, leave them down in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe so you can see some more of my content. I really enjoyed making this video and I hope that it can help you in even the smallest way. And I want to remind you that you're not alone and you can do this. Whatever your goal is, you can do it. I love you guys and I'll see you in my next video.